We've been using the requests module for a while now, and we've been using it to make HTTP requests across the internet. We've already seen the get request, and this is a way for us to get pieces of data from somebody else, like an API provider. Now, there's also four other common types of requests that we should probably know about, post, put, and delete. We can use the request module to complete a get request by simply writing requests.get, and then we put our parameters inside the parentheses. For the other three requests, the code looks pretty much the same. It's dot post, dot put, and dot delete. Whereas a get request is made where we ask an external system for a particular piece of data, and they give that to us in the response, a post request is where we give the external system some piece of data. And we're not so interested in the response we're getting back other than whether if it was successful or not. For example, if you wanted to save a piece of data in Google Sheets, then you might use the Google Sheets API to post your data into your Google Sheet. Or maybe you want to use the Twitter API to post a tweet, then your program is going to send your tweet through a post request to the Twitter API. So that's how get and post works. Put is where you simply update a piece of data in the external service. So if you had a spreadsheet in Google Sheets, then maybe you want to update some of the values in the spreadsheet then you would use a put request. And finally, delete is simply where you want to delete a piece of data in the external service, like a tweet that you posted or a Facebook post. Today, we're going to be building our habit tracker using the Pixella API. And in order to use this API, we're going to post our habit tracking data. For example, how many pages of a book we've read, how many kilometers we've cycled. And we're going to be posting that data to Pixella to be tracked in our graph. If you head over to their website and you scroll down, you can see that it tells you how to get started. And it's a series of six steps. So we're going to be completing these in order. And we're going to be pairing this short form get started guide with their documentation. So we're going to have that side by side in order to see all of the documentation on each of the steps. Step one involves creating a user account. And it says you have to hit up this particular endpoint using the HTTP post request. So this is the first time we're making a post request. Now I've set up a new project in PyCharm called Habit Tracker. And in my main.py, as always, I'm going to start off by importing the requests module. Now, because this is a brand new project, we're going to have to install that package to make this red underline go away. And once it's been installed successfully, we can tap into that method requests.post. What are we going to put into this parentheses? What are the parameters? What are the inputs? Well, the first thing is the URL endpoint, right? So this is the Pixella endpoint. And that is going to be all of this. Let's copy that over and paste it in as a string. Now, if we head over to the API document, you can see that there's an index of the API on the right and also at the beginning of the docs. So what we want to do is first create a user. That's step one. Now, this API is actually really well documented, especially given the fact that it's actually not a big development team behind this. If we take a look, this is the endpoint and this is what we've got in our code. Next, we're going to make our post request and we're going to add some parameters into the request body. So you can see that some of these are required and others are optional. So we're going to add a value for each of the required parameters, token, username, agree terms of service, and that we're not a minor. So let's create our user params. And the first key is our token. Now let's see what this token needs to be. It has to be a string that's used to authenticate your user. And we're going to use it later on as well when we access our graph and when we add to it. So make sure you save this securely. This is basically like an API key that you're going to generate yourself. 
This token can contain any character, so you can make up a key like this, but the length of the token has to be between eight characters and 128 characters. So I think I've definitely got more than eight characters there. So I can move on to the next key, which is my username. I'm gonna try and see if I can get away with just my first name. If it fails, we can always try again. Next, we've got agree terms of service. And this is going to be either yes or no. We're probably gonna to have to say yes if we actually want to use this service. And also we're gonna to have to say yes that we're not a minor. Let's make sure that we don't make any typos by simply pasting this in. So it's a yes for agree to terms of service and a yes to the fact that I'm not a minor, sadly. Not a minor anymore. Once we've got our user parameters and our pixel at endpoint, then we're ready to make our post request. Again, we're going to start off with the URL, which is going to be our pixel at endpoint. And then we're going to add a new keyword argument. And this is called JSON. Notice how all the data that we're posting over to Pixella is pretty much in the format of a JSON, string and string. This is basically a piece of JSON data that we're going to send over. And that's all there is to it. The endpoint and also the JSON data that we want to send over. So let's go ahead and save this inside a response variable, just as we did before. And then once this is completed, let's go ahead and print what the response is. Now you can either tap into the response as a JSON, but given that in this case, we're not really looking to do anything with the response. We just want to check if it's actually successful or not. We can actually tap into a property called text. So it'll give you back the response as a piece of text. Let's go ahead and run this and see if I can get away with setting my username as Angela. Wow. So there's actually no user called Angela at the moment. And I was able to nab that username. So the reason why we're interested in looking at the response is if there were some issues, for example, if I tried to run this again, now that I've taken this username, I think it's probably going to fail. And it tells us this user already exists. Now, alternatively, if we said no to one of these agree to terms of service or not minor, it's probably also going to give us a message telling us why this post request failed. But now that I've completed this step, I can actually comment it out because I've now created my user. We've now set up ourselves with a new account on Pixella with a username and also a secret token that we're going to use in the future to access this account. It's effectively our username and password. So in the next lesson, we're going to create our graph and we're going to learn how to use a more secure method of authentication. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.